Let's talk about Credit Suisse, which is facing a crisis of confidence with widespread speculations on social media about the financial health of the Swiss bank. This is not true. Credit Suisse is not going bankrupt. So I think what we need to discuss in this video is why is the media talking about it? Why is it on everyone's profile that Credit Suisse could actually be another Lehman crisis that happened in 2008 that could lead to something disastrous and the stock markets would continue to tumble? But actually, all of this is a rumor and the rumor started a while back. In this video, we're going to talk about what that rumor was and how it extended and is Credit Suisse really going bankrupt? If not, what's its status today? So Credit Suisse comes on the list of systematically important banks. So if you look at this list over here, JP Morgan is right at the top and somewhere here down the list is Credit Suisse. Now, what this list means is that they're too big to fail. They're such a large part of the market and usually they take the buyer side, the seller side, the insurance side, the creation side, the broking side, that if these companies or these banks fail, the financial markets start getting cracks worldwide. So there's such an important link in the financial chain, they just shouldn't break. So everyone's comparing Credit Suisse car crisis to Lehman Brothers car crisis in 2008. Now, why are they doing this comparison to understand that? Let's understand what was the Lehman Brothers crisis in 2008. So like all financial crises, we'll start with the bank. The bank is right here. And we imagine this one to be an interesting one. Let's say this is multi-storied. Now, the bank wants to give out a loan and a lot of these loans to people who want to buy houses. You know, the houses with a nice chimney and a swing outside, the American dream. And these houses are bought by who? So I'll say houses, mango people. So Aam Admi actually buys these houses and how? By taking a loan from the bank. Now, here's the problem. I'll draw this in green. Here, and at a 6% interest rate. All right, so the bank earns 6% spread from this loan that are going out to these houses. Now, you obviously know that these houses were given, these loans were given to people who actually couldn't afford these houses, but we'll talk about that in just a bit. After the money flows to the bank, the bank says, okay, I don't risk to nahi lena hai, but I still want to earn money. So what I'll do is, I'll sell this, I'll package it into a security. So I'll take different housing loans, house 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 600 houses or X number of houses and create a security. So this is just stacks of paper that I'm trying to draw here. These stacks of paper basically represent multiple house mortgages, house loans. And this is called a security because you can trade it and it's a mortgage security. So it's called a mortgage backed security or an MBS. Okay, this is a fancy name. Basically, loan ko karke, they're giving it out and saying, Kharid lo. But why will these HNIs or investors buy it? So, this is usually HNI money, but actually, it's institutional money. So, I'll say money which actually purchases this. Now, remember, these institutions could be anyone it could be hedge funds, it could be other banks. Um, it could be a pension fund, it could even be endowment funds like from Harvard, etc. Because they need to be careful with their money for something that's growing. They participate in debt and collateralized debt like this. So this is invested and he says, okay, the bank says I will give you 3%. You buy my security, I percent saal ka dunga. So this is great, right? Bank has offloaded risk to someone else and he still gets to keep the 3% over here. But you see this guy, the institution. Is liye paisa bahut important hai. So, he cannot lose this money. He's very risk averse. Tabhi equity mein nahi ja raha hai. He says ki, yaar, agar galti se, shayad, if some of these guys don't pay and I don't make 3%, I make 2.9%. I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with 2.4%, 2.6%. I, I want to make sure I make my 3%. So, what do you do to make sure you actually make what you were promised to make. Well, one, you do due diligence. Another thing is you can buy insurance. Just say factory, you go out, you buy a factory, patake ki factory, and the biggest risk is that the patake 
uh, actually go out in a flame. So what does the factory owner does? He buys an insurance to make sure if that happens, I'm still safe. Similarly, this is the asset. They say, okay, I want to buy insurance and I'm going to draw this dotted line here. Comes our third player and this is called... So this is a very bad drawing of an insurance uh, called a CDS. So don't worry about these names. These names can get scary, but it's a... The credit default swap. Now what this means is, this is a credit default. If over here there are default that happens, you swap it for insurance money. And that's what it basically means. Uh, so I'll write it over here. It says credit. All right, so we have three players over here. We have the Aam Admi buying houses and living the American dream. We have the bank giving the money to these guys, which is going to h &I institutions as a mortgage-backed security who are doing this for this 3% return. They think this security is actually good. Also, by the way, there are also credit rating agencies like India May, we have Moody's, we have Ikra, we have Crystal, we have credit rating agencies abroad as well. And they basically gave this a very high standard. And so, this credit is very high. So, they said, okay, the credit is good, but still, I want to be safe. I have insurance from the CDS. So, I will be able to claim money from this LIC. Actually, it's not LIC. This is released by a bank also. But it's called, the insurance itself is called a credit default swap. Now, the, the reason that this CDS exists is because this is considered to be high-grade good paper. But you know, this is where things changed. And this is where the Lehman crisis actually happened. Lehman is this guy. What happened was, in the unlimited need for greed, they started giving houses to everyone. There is even a story, I think, of a stripper who got loans worth 15 million, who purchased many houses in just a period of a week. And she could not actually afford that house. Now, whether this is a rumor or not, the point is, many people got loans to actually buy these houses, even though they could not afford it. Now, because these houses were given out at these rates, many houses started springing up. So I'll draw bunch of mango people <laughs> buying lots of houses. And why not, right? A house is secure, it's good. But you tell me, what's going to happen if house number one was bought for, say, $100,000, then sold to a friend, my friend, Vasant. I'm like, Vasant, yaar, isko kharid lo. And Vasant says, cool, I'll just take a loan from the bank and I'll buy your house for 500 k Great, then Vasan's very smart. After some time, he says, you know, I want to sell it to Swati. And Swati says, cool, I'll just take a loan from the bank. I'll buy it for $1 million. The housing market expanded. But you see, there's too much liquidity over here actually supporting this housing boom. At some point, there were too many houses which were actually built by builders. And the value of these houses was not 500K, 1 million, 100K. Let's say it fell to 50K. And now, uh, she can't sell her at such a big loss. And the entire system collapsed because there are too many houses and the price of the houses actually came down. Now, crisis started that demand over here fell, which means people could not pay this 6%. And defaults started to happen. Because they didn't pay the bank, the institutions didn't get the 3% that they had. So, here money did not flow. And because this didn't happen, banks went to Lehman Brothers, which is the insurance provider in this case. Lehman said, I checked everything. I can't believe you're defaulting. I don't have so much money. So, Lehman basically went out of business because they couldn't afford this. And that's how the entire system failed and Lehman went bankrupt. So now, why are people comparing this Lehman crisis and all of this failure with Credit Suisse? I'll tell you what changed today in 2022. So first, we don't have this housing thing happening right now. So I'll remove this. But we obviously do have a bank and that bank is Credit Suisse. Now, Credit Suisse obviously does not have MBS because there are no houses. But it does have bonds. These are basically corporate bonds 
it's how a company like this takes a loan like a corporate bond people can give them money with this money credit suisse grows their business makes a profit and gives them say a 3% return now this these bonds also have insurance called the cds so all of this works well when the bank is actually making a profit and can repay the money via cash flow but there is a problem here and it started in 2021 In 2021, two amazing things happened. One, Credit Suisse invested in a hedge fund called Archegos Hedge Fund, and this hedge fund lost five billion dollars reportedly in just a single day. I'm sure someone in the bank had a heart attack when they found out. The second event was they had invested ten billion dollars in this company, which used to finance logistics. Now it doesn't matter what the company did. but that company went bankrupt so that's another 10 billion dollars ka loss total 15 billion dollars and after that for almost a year look at the pnl every single quarter credit suisse has been making a loss so now tell me if you had given a loan to credit suisse wouldn't you be scared that they made two huge losses of 15 billion dollars they're not making any profit they won't be able to pay back the bond and that was the first crack that all investors saw and when this happened they all ran towards the insurance product which was the cds and said hey i need to buy the cds in case they default at least i'll get my money back now the demand for cds actually went up so let's suppose that this bond is worth 100 million dollars so this is 100 million dollars if you want to buy an insurance for this you would pay about 1% of the entire amount. So 1% of 100 million is 1 million dollars. So 1% that's about 1 million dollars. And that basically insures you against the entire bond that you purchased. But because the CDS demand was so high because people were scared, remember, people were scared, this became 2.5%. So almost 2.5 million dollars for example. And this is unusual. People don't pay two and a half times something. So the fear became even worse. And during the Lehman time, this is exactly what had happened. When the fear starts to set in, insurance prices started to go up. And just this linkage, this one single linkage, that the insurance premiums went up, this could be another Lehman crisis. You started seeing news all over the media that this could repeat. and catastrophe is probably at the end of the tunnel now this is not the case let's understand why so the first thing you should know is that these bonds that they have to make payments to are worth 6 billion dollars that's a pretty big number and i'd be worried myself too 6 billion bahut zyada paisa hota hai but let's understand how large the company credit suisse actually is their total assets under management is 1.1 trillion that's a lot but of course i can't take that assets under management and pay the bonds i can only pay it from assets that i have or from profits profits though they're not making for the last four quarters so let's look at their capital structure so capital structures of banks are divided into tiers tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 basically this means liquidity tier 3 means i can't withdraw this money easily because they're stuck in assets over a longer term tier 1 is immediate liquidity so this means that i can take this money and use it for the bonds this is 130 billion dollars tier 1 capital that they have is 130 billion so all you need to do is simple math dena hai 6 billion hai 130 does it sound difficult no therefore there is no liquidity problem over here at all so another way to know whether a bank is liquid or not is using the capital adequacy ratio so a ratio of 3 or 4 or 5 is considered good so they have a capital adequacy ratio of 1313 which is much higher than many banks over here in summary what i'd like to say is that this too was a rumor that went out of control someone used the word cds compared it to lehman and everyone got scared spiraling downwards the story became worse and these guys can actually afford what's happening right now there is no crisis on i think around 27th of october there is a meeting where they are going to restructure the entire capital of the company to find out if there are any skeletons or any provisioning that needs to be done which makes this company even stronger going forward maybe that's a point where the stock also turns 
But this was a high class rumor and a lot of people got stuck in it. What do you think? Was this a little more complicated than you thought? Do you now understand it? Please put it in the comments below. It took me a while to understand this and even more time for us to edit and put this out. If this was useful, I'll see you in the comments below.